Hey everyone! I thought, as I often get into these conversations with computers, I would actually show you how easy it is to connect everything up in a computer, in an average computer, just like this one. Okay? So, the first thing I need to do is actually go through and just unplug everything so we're going to start from scratch because a lot of people I think find this quite daunting the only ones I'm going to leave are the power cables up the top here because they're a bit hard to get to and we'll pop out the memory as well now We need to reposition. Okay, we're going to start with the back of the hard drive. Um, and in this case, it's um, SATA, S-A-T-A, Serial A-T-A. And I'm only going to show you the hard drive because it's exactly the same with the optical drive, the CD-ROM drive. Um, you know, it might be a bit daunting to some because you've got all these plugs, you know, there's one there, there's one there, there's another one there, there's three on this one. But um, you get two types, you get Molex, which is this one, your four pin Molex. Or you get your serial ATA one. A bit of dust on there. Now, a lot of modern stuff is serial ATA, so that's the one you want. Some of them actually have it on. Yeah, it's got like P7 written on it, and well, that one doesn't, but uh, they will only go on one way. And if I turn it that way, you can see there's like a little notch on that side. So that needs to be. When you face the plug to the hard drive or the optical drive, it needs to be on this side, on the right hand side as you look at it. And it will only plug in one place. There is only one connector it will go on. And your data cable is exactly the same, it's got that little notch, so this one would be on the left as you look at it. Well, basically the notch next to the power cable, and that just plugs on just like that. Um, there's a couple of things I'm actually going to do um, separately out of this case. Because it's going to be easier to see. So, what I'm going to do is just move you again. Now, as you can see at the bottom of this case, we have four blue sockets. I need a pointy stick. That's what I could have done. Let's use a knife. We've got these. These are the um, four SAR connectors. And as you can see, actually I don't know if you can see, but there is a little notch on this side. And again, it doesn't really matter which one you plug these in. And on the motherboard, they are usually numbered anyway. But I like to go hard drive onto number one. I don't think it really matters. I've never had a problem. And you could put like your CD-ROM drive either on number two or three or number four. It's up to you. And, uh, well... That's your SATA connectors, your power and whatnot. Like I said, it doesn't matter which power plug you use. Um, the only other thing I think you might get confused with is you've got your audio and USB on there. Well, if you look at the end of this connector, this is the audio. It's got a pattern. 
It's actually got a peg missing right in there. You can see it's just a blank spot. Well, it's simply just a case of looking on the motherboard for a header that matches that pattern. But of course, that is up here and it will only go on the one way round. Well, my arm is probably looking rather large. Um, if you've got card reader like this have and USB ports on the front, um, you're going to have two of these cables and in this case we've got two USB headers. Now, just bear with me for a minute because I've got myself tied up in a bloody knot. Um, but the layout for the card reader and the USB on the plugs are exactly the same and the headers are right in here those two blue headers are the um, USB 1 and 2 and that's where your card reader goes it goes on one of those USB headers doesn't matter which one just pick one and plug it on um, again because of that blank pin they will only plug on one way so you just make sure you've got the pattern around the right way and plug it in like that it's as simple as that RAM is another one that only goes in one way so let me reposition you as we can see with this stick of RAM you've got that notch that notch has got to line up with a little peg on here um, do not force these in if you have to force them in or use any bit of force you've likely got it in round the wrong way and you'll cause damage but it should I think I have actually got it round the wrong way I have indeed classic example you see one end wouldn't push down because I had it in the wrong way so can't do this and keep my arms out of the way. Just line it up with both the clips at either end. Like that. There we go. Can't see my finger, but my finger is in here. There's a little catch. Let's just click, click. If it doesn't go in that easy, then you've got it round the wrong way, so don't force it. Like I said, you will cause damage. installed uh, I need to get set up for the next bit so I'm going to pause you for a second okay we've got a guinea pig motherboard here now the socket is old and no longer used but the same principle still applies you have your processor I, think I might just uh, zoom you in a little bit I don't know if you can see, but in this top corner, I'll bring it in a bit actually. You see there's like a little um, shape in this corner. Well that, on these processors, corresponds with a little notch there. So it's simply a case of making sure they correspond, drop it in, lock it down. It should just drop in. Modern processors, the uh, pinless type like this one, is exactly the same. It's got these two notches. These two notches will line up with two like little pegs on the socket, and again, they just drop in. No need to force them. Again, if you've got to force them, you're doing that wrong. <laughs> or there's, you know, there's a bent pin on the processor if it's one of these with a pin. Anyway, I'm going to zoom you out, because the next bit, which I think some might have difficulty with, is the power header. Now, this one is actually quite an awkward one, because without looking, I don't even know which one or which cable's got to go where, because this is for your front, what they call the front panel, which is where you power button is, your power LED, your hard drive LED and your reset switch is. 
Well, that reset is actually used a great deal these days. It's just like a cheap way to reset your PC if it crashed years ago. <laughs> but on this motherboard, we've got the header here. Uh, I haven't got a lot of room. And I'm trying to do this behind the camera as well. Or over the camera. There's the header. That's a fan header, this one. Again, there's only one plug from the fans that will go on there, so you can't really get that mixed up. But here's one style of header. This is the more complicated one. Yeah, that's a good thing to choose, isn't it, for a, a tutorial. But I will show you the other type as well. Now, what I like to use, which is actually off camera because I'm zoomed in, is a magnifying glass. But um, that's actually helped a lot, hasn't it? Look at that. We can actually see it's all labelled. I can't actually see because uh, <laughs> I can't quite see through the lens. The end screen, the screen's too small, but I can guarantee on the video it's going to be better. So I've got to get my big head in here just for a second. Let's do that. We still oh, we went off camera. There we go. Right. This one. The red is marked hard drive, HDD, LED, hard drive, LED, which I don't actually have. I don't have no LEDs, but these, your front panel connectors, when I can get on camera, where is it? There we go. Is, uh, focus. Well, I'm holding it upside down, but as you can see, it's a labelled reset switch. Uh, so all the cables that come from the front panel are labelled like that. So, I'm not sure, I think the reset switch is going to go on this blue one here. Or not. Power switch goes on the yellow one according to that. So that's where your power switch would go. So that's your power switch. Let's make sure I'm still in shot. Yep. Power switch. Your red on this one would be hard drive LED. Pretty certain the green is power LED. Yeah, I can see that. Ah, well, that's right. Reset does go on blue, but it goes up this end. There are only four that you really need to know. Now, I'm just going to grab another motherboard because there is a common type of board header for that and I'll show you that one if voila we have the other type now again this is actually quite an old motherboard it's got a Pentium 4 on it but uh, as you can see we've got two pin two pin two pin two pin and an odd pin right here where my finger is um, and it is simple as the ones marked red on this one on your hard drive then you reset. Uh, I don't think I want a little um, piece of paper to mark it on because we can't can't see it that clearly, can we? Can I zoom in a bit more? Woo! I don't like that, does it? Is it going to focus on it? Nope. There we go. So yeah, the layout is similar to a USB heading. Uh, here we go. See? Similar to a USB header. That would actually plug on here. See? That's for a Dell, right? That would all be round the right way. And basically what you've got is on these standard headers, which are still used today, is your hard drive LED with your reset switch next to it. And then right above the reset switch is your power switch. And right next to that is your power LED. So if I had all singles like I've got here, you'd uh, put your reset switch on those two. Your hard drive LED on those two, 
power switch directly above like that power LED directly above and as you can see it's actually got a little positive negative or a little positive symbol there for your LEDs these doesn't matter it's a switch it's gonna work whichever way around you put these so even if you turned it that way around it would still work LEDs um, are polarity sensitive so they will only work if they don't light up when you first plug them on just unplug them from the board and turn the plugs around but um, I do believe it's usually because they have two colours like this and one of them is usually white that the white wire goes to the positive um, the coloured wire will go to the positive um, but unfortunately I don't actually have anything to show you I've usually got LEDs laying around because I do keep some as spares not that you ever need to replace them on a computer I've never had to but I do find other uses for them, so I tend to keep them. Anyway, I do hope you found this video uh, somewhat useful. Of course, if you've got any questions, then uh, feel free to ask. If there's anything you want to uh, see me show you specifically, then again, feel free to ask. And uh, I will talk to you again in the next video. Ta-ta.